What is up everyone, today I have a bunch of very exciting and very interesting pieces of news for you. However, just before we get into the news, I want to say a huge, massive thank you. Last night, we hit 80,000 subscribers, and that is quite literally only 20,000 away from 100,000. We're getting closer to that big, big milestone that everybody sees as like uh, the big one. And it just makes me so unbelievably happy to see that people come here to watch these pieces of news and enjoy them. Enjoy them enough to click that little red button. And that sometimes maybe if you're having a bad day, I can be here to make it just that little bit better for you. And it just makes me unbelievably happy. And honestly, I could speak on and on about this, but we need to get right into the news. So first piece of news for you guys today is a very good one for all the Quest PC VR gamers. Viveport, yes, that service, Viveport, the paid service where you pay monthly, yeah, that would make sense, and get a bunch of PC VR games for that period. Well, they're giving out a month of free PC VR to Oculus Quest users. Viveport, HTC's storefront for VR games and apps, is throwing out free promo codes to owners of Oculus Quest and Oculus Quest 2s, which will let you play all the games enrolled in its Infinity program for a whole month. Viveport really has come a long way in the past few years by streamlining its interface and making it look more attractive to developers financially, so they'll list their games there. To get more Quest users on board with Infinity, HTC is throwing out a limited time promotion starting today to both new and existing Viveport Infinity members, which lets you play for free for a month. The promo ends on August 30th, so make sure to act fast. So there you guys go. In case you are part of that group of Oculus Quest PC VR gamers like myself, make sure to snatch those promo codes down below in the description in that article and hop on to Viveport Infinity so that you can try out possibly your favorite games in VR for free. Okay, okay, on to the big one. Facebook's Aria was leaked. Well, I don't even know whether to call it leaked because it was just entirely released full stop. Now, I have no proof that this is exactly what they are going to release on Oculus Connect. Well, Facebook Connect. I posted this on Twitter yesterday, where The Verge posted, the manual for Facebook's Project Aria AR glasses show what it's like to wear them, and it looks pretty uncomfortable. Now, I won't lie to you, it does look uncomfortable, but here is the problem with that. A lot of smart glasses nowadays look uncomfortable to wear simply because they're bulky. I mean, look at that. That is not the thickness of normal glasses. However, when you actually put them on, you just kind of forget that you're wearing them. However, these glasses from Facebook are not the full Aria project. Believe it or not, these things won't even be AR. However, that didn't stop Facebook from putting a minimum of two cameras onto the glasses. Without further ado, let's just take a straight look at the manual, as posted by the FCC. Currently, the glasses don't seem to be called Aria, but Gemini, and this is the Gemini user guide. We seem to have version updates right here. 0.1, 31st of January, 2020, initial draft. 0.2, 7th of February, 2020, added info to boot modes, buttons, slash switches, LED states, and USB connection guidelines. 0.3, 10th of February, 2020, updated the link to Gemini client tool to most recent version, etc, etc, ends on the 28th of August 2020. So whether these are the actual glasses that we will be getting during Oculus Connect, I cannot tell you. Health and safety information for ages 18 plus only. Gemini glasses are only intended for use by adults aged 18 or older. Interesting. But here is one that might upset you. Non-consumer use only. The glasses are intended for limited distribution only, for purposes of testing and data collection, and are for use by authorized user only. As prototype equipment, the glasses are designed and tested to reduce the risk of injury during authorized use, but they have not been subject to testing and certification required for consumer use. There are known and unknown risks of personal injury, death, sickness, and property damage associated with the use of your glasses. Death? Okay, so as concerning as that is, again, I cannot tell you for certain that these will be the glasses we get during Oculus Connect. The glasses we get during Oculus Connect, I would hope, would be consumer ready. However, it's still interesting to take a look at this. Let's move to something that might tell us a little more about what the glasses look like. Uh, driving and flying, do not Charging use the companion app while driving. Cable. Check. Temperature and Applicate. overheating, your glasses shouldn't overheat. Check. Okay, battery, the glasses contain a lithium-ion okay. battery. Accessories, uh, the glasses come with a provided charging cable. The glasses 
glasses are intended to be worn for extended periods. Okay. If you feel any discomfort, for example, headaches, eye strain, eye muscle twitching, altered vision, or other abnormalities, damn, this sounds really scary. As you can see here, the glasses, again, they look kind of bulky. They look kind of like these right here. Kind of understandable, you need to fit those electronics somewhere. But looking down, the switches and buttons. We seem to have one really large button, which is the mute switch, forward equals record, and back equals mute. So I would assume that's actually the record switch and that's what it should be called. We've got the power button a little further, the proximity sensor, status LED, and then up top, we've got the capture button right above the lenses. So the app is called Ariane and there seems to be one for iOS and there seems to be one for Android, or at least I would hope so. There's nothing about that here. And here we can take a look at the app a little bit more in detail. So again, codename Ariane, and we see Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and battery. Okay, that's quite a simple little app. It looks quite interesting. They run Android? They seem to run Android because it says here, copying your recording files, ADB pull. ADB is Android debugging bridge. These things run Android. So even though they don't have a screen, they seem to be running a headless version of Android. That is interesting. Yeah, they've got EDL mode, fast boot mode, diagnostics mode, wow. And they seem to be running some sort of Qualcomm chip as well, because it says here to install Qualcomm's USB driver. But again, looking at the glasses a little closer, you can see there seems to be one camera to the left and one camera to the right. And some people might seriously see that as a security risk, especially since right now it said this is not for consumer use and for gathering data. And gathering data could mean literally anything on AR glasses, which means if you see people walking around with these, they're probably quote unquote gathering data, which I mean, I guess, look, it's a public space. You know, just don't do anything stupid in a public space. <laughs> From protocol, Project Aria's hardware is known as Gemini. The device is called Gemini EVT, with EVT, engineering valuation test, being a common acronym in the hardware industry for small product test runs of a few dozen units, meant to test both the design and functionality of a product before it is put into actual production. There is no visual AR component, and Gemini glasses are available with prescription lenses. That's pretty cool. There's a mobile companion app called Ariane. The glasses are equipped with four cameras. Okay, I was wrong. The glasses are equipped with four cameras. I wonder where they put those. So you're able to take photos and videos in the VRS format, which contains captures of all four camera streams simultaneously. The hardware interface is fairly pared down and Gemini glasses are using a Qualcomm chipset. They run a customized version of Android that is being called Oculus OS. So this answers a bunch of our questions. Yes, they are running Android. Yes, they are running some form of Oculus OS that will probably receive AR in the future. And this doesn't seem to be what we will be getting during Oculus Connect, simply because this is a valuation sample. Only a few dozen units were created, supposedly, and this is not what we are going to be getting. And here is something interesting that might honestly ruin your chances of buying this anytime in the future. It certainly looks like Project Aria is not meant to be a commercial product, full stop. Reading from The Verge. Facebook says on its Project Aria site that the glasses aren't a commercial product. They're not acting as a prototype for something that the general public will eventually buy. That's reiterated by the manual's many statements that the headset is an engineering product and is only for use by people working for Facebook. The company has said that the headset is worn by researchers on its campuses and in public, though it says that any data collected is anonymized and the headset has a privacy mode. Well, that is kind of unfortunate. This also sort of according to me, ruins the chances of any Project Aria device for the public being shown at Facebook Connect. However, we still don't know that for sure. Let me know what you think down below. Now, I myself, I'm personally super excited for AR glasses. Once again, these will not have AR yet. That means I don't actually know what the four cameras are being used for. Now, let's move on to the next piece of news. Now, I have this one labeled as this is creepy. From Road to VR, reality might be a simulation and scientists think it's possible to find out for sure. Now, here's the real question. Do we want to know for sure? I feel like if the world did find out for sure and found out that this was in fact a simulation, we'd go into a panic mode, an absolute lockdown of everything possible, trying to figure out how. That's a problem because currently we're living life normally. And I feel like if we did find out that this was a simulation, I feel like the world would go full panic mode. And I don't know if that's good. Yes, some people want to know the truth, but others, they just want to live their lives. And the real question is, 
Does it matter if it's a simulation? Does it really matter if it's a simulation? That's that's the real question. Now with VR, AR, etc. Moving forward, it's such a fast pace. It's no longer a surprise to see people wondering even harder whether this truly is a simulation. Whether in a previous life, maybe we got to the point where we found technology so insane that we created something that makes us think it's real. Philosopher Nick Bostrom, in a 2003 paper titled Are You Living in a Computer Simulation, which was published in the peer-reviewed Philosophical Quarterly Journal. In the paper, Bostrom explores the idea that given existing trends in computer power, a far future post-human civilization will likely wield immense computing power, enough to easily be capable of running simulations of billions of universes just like ours. He raises the question. If we think humanity will one day be capable of simulating billions of universes, isn't it likely that we are already living in one of those billions of simulations rather than being ourselves? Overall, this is quite an interesting paper, but it is so unbelievably long that if I were to read this entire thing to you, well, we'd be here all day. So I will leave this down for you guys below, as usual, in case you guys want to read the entire thing and find out whether we are truly living in a simulation. But for the rest of us, we're going to move on to the next piece of news. A VR documentary of space is being released. Space Explorers, the ISS experience is a multi-part VR documentary from Felix and Paul Studios and TIME that lets you see what life is like aboard the International Space Station. The first two episodes transport you to the rare field air of the ISS interior. However, the studios today announced that they've begun filming episodes three and four outside of the ISS, letting you virtually experience the edge of space via 3D 360 video. So I believe as VR and AR becomes more popular, we're gonna start seeing more of these documentaries and videos and movies that will literally transport you into the the world and add up that extra layer of immersion. As nice as it is to sit back in the cinema in this massive screen and watch your movie and get quote unquote immersed because the screen is so large, how much better would it be if you could watch that movie inside the movie? Yeah, quite literally inside by wearing, say, a VR headset. Now with most movies being created using 3D graphics and 3D animation, technically it could be possible just by sticking a camera in the middle of the movie and letting that be the player. Of course, I imagine it's not that simple, but I still do see that this is probably where we are going to be heading. How cinemas and other places will react to that? I'm not entirely sure because I just don't see everyone going to the cinema and putting on a VR headset if they can do the exact same thing at home. I want to be able to watch that movie in that 3D environment, being able to transport myself into the movie. I enjoy movies on a flat screen, but it would be so much better to quite literally be inside it. Let me know what you think down below. Do you want to be transported inside the movie, or do you think that's maybe going too far? And from Upload VR, Captain Toolhead promises tower defense depth with some caveats. So I always wondered what it would be like if somebody created a tower defense in VR in the traditional kind of Bloons TD4 map. Anyone here played Bloons TD4 on like an iPod? I remember doing that. I remember doing that on like the first iPod touch. That's fond memories to be honest with you. Captain Toonhead versus Punks from Outer Space arrives after a welcome rest from the genre. Then, and it promises enough polish and depth to at least raise an eyebrow. So this is going to be quite interesting. I will definitely be trying this out simply because even nostalgia wants me to. And I'm quite interested to see how well it'll work or whether it'll work. But yeah, let me know what you think down below. And that is going to be it for today's video. Thank you all so much for joining me. I hope you have a fantastic day or night. Once again, I honestly don't know how to say how proud I am of this community we've built. We are at 80,000 people in a community. And when I think of that number, it's just a number. But then I visualize it, let's say all those people in one room, and I see the immense size of what we have created here. It is absolutely unbelievable to me. And I never thought that we would rise to this size. And I just want to say I'm unbelievably proud of this community, and I am so unbelievably happy to have each and every one of you here. Thank you. I'm happy doing this, and I will continue with doing it for the foreseeable future. And the community is what makes it worth it. So, if you guys are not yet part of our community, make sure to slap that subscribe button down below, join our Discord, join our Reddit, where I want to see you posting your spice memes. If you guys would like to support the channel in any way, shape, or we've got sick mugs down below that boost your FPS by 300%, and merch that doesn't put you your body. And if you guys want to be notified about future content coming up on the channel, make sure to smack the subscribe button with your hood in my balance. See you in the next video. Peace.